can you make a knife out of ball bearings? Let's go find out. I became a, a huge fan of ball bearings and using ball bearings to make knives when I made canister ball bearing Damascus. And then finding out that it was 52100 steel, I started buying flat stock of 52100. But then I found out that not all ball bearings are made from 52100. Some are stainless steel, some are uh, air hardening, and that can be a huge problem for the knife maker. Looking back on what I did here, I should what I should have done was forge this down to a cuboid that's one inch thick by three inches wide, anneal it in some clay-based litter for as long as it needs to be annealed, and then stick it in my bandsaw and cut coupons off of it. What I did do is not that big a deal. We only forged about a third of this down into a thin little paddle here so we can cut our pieces out of it, and it worked out good. Well, now that we have our piece drawn out here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off and we're going to cut it into three coupons. So we put this in the, uh, in the forge last night for an annealing process. I don't know it yet, but the annealing process that I keep saying I had put it in there for 24 hours and anneal it for turns out isn't great. It's not good for this steel in particular. And I'm just going to make the decision right now that that me figures out later on in the video that we are going to be moving to a, an annealing process, a traditional annealing process of using a clay-based litter and getting the minimum of six inches of coverage around our piece and then we just let it cool down now yes that's going to make videos be a little bit longer but it will allow us to get better results on knives but also for when we're testing these steels in this you know knife steel or not series and i think that's important so taking a little bit more time is is good so yeah i don't know it yet but when it hits me that that's what happened i kind of try and cover it up with um a little bit of smile and humor um i think i might have chuckled a little bit i don't know but uh yeah it's it's not great so we're going to get back to that me and allow you to have fun as I realize that the process I've been calling annealing isn't great. So we're going to do a normalization this morning with the control. And then we're going to take the other two and we're going to do the water quench and the oil quench. The first inkling that something was not right was right here. This is the brand new bandsaw blade on here and it just dulls it right away. And so it doesn't really hit me too much. I'm just like, okay, whatever, I'll go to the angle grinder. We start getting here to mark and it's like, okay, that didn't mark at all. We get a little bit of a mark on our oil quench one and it's still not really with me yet as I'm putting them in here and we're, you know, trying to get this thing done.
this is our control piece, and what you're about to see is not supposed to happen. This should have bent, but it didn't. So, what I'm feeling right now is I'm like, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, let's move on. And we get to the water, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be, it's, it's, it's going to shatter. And it absolutely shattered. The bottom piece is like broken into three or four different pieces that's in the vise. And I was like, okay, you know, that's what it was supposed to do. And grain's not too bad, you know. I'm like, okay, whatever. We get to the oil. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is, this is going to break. And it's going to do what it needs to do. It did exactly what it needs to do. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, that control was not supposed to do that. What did we do wrong? And yeah, it was kind of ridiculous. Okay, so we did our first snap slash break test. And all of them kind of did what I thought they would do, except for one. I actually thought that the control was going to bend but apparently we need to do a little bit more rigorous annealing on it at the end of the day because just putting it in the forge letting it cool, let it cool down in the forge was not enough and then heating it up and then letting it cool down here not enough it absolutely snapped and you can see the grain there is um not great but not bad it could have been a little work hardening what this is telling me for this control piece to really get a good and for all the pieces realistically before we even cut it to get a good um reading on this what we need to be doing is we need to be getting our bucket filling it full of a clay based litter and then heating up our piece prior to cutting it and then letting it cool down as slow as it needs to cool down. It's probably going to be 48 hours, two days of cooling down. Might be sooner, but most likely going to be 48 hours of, of cooling that needs to happen. And the thing is, the key to a, a real annealing process here is you in a clay-based litter, you need to have six inches of litter around your piece, 360 degrees, all the way around it. it has to be at least six inches to give it the proper cooling um, that it needs to, to slow everything down. So, but the, that, that was a surprise right there. So the, the water-based quench, it's not bad. It's a little, it's a little rougher, a little bigger grain. Definitely you can see a line around the uh, outside of it to where it case hardened in there. It's, it's not that bad, though. It did shatter. It's, it reacted exactly how I thought it was going to. The bottom absolutely shattered when the part was in the vise. It's in multiple pieces. Because here's the thing. Why are we testing ball bearings when basically the common knowledge says that most ball bearings are 5200 or are hardable steel, right? Well, the fact is, is that some ball bearings are stainless. Some ball bearings are a, a, a air-cooled steel for durability. You know, it all depends. And so it's just a good idea to test all these things. All right, so for the oil quench, this one probably has the most uniform. Like on the water, you can definitely see a line around it, uh, you know, where it kind of case hardened. The grain compared to the two. So if we bring both of them and put them side by side here, and you, and you can look at them side by side, the water has a little bit more grain, bigger grain to it, and the oil has a little slightly smaller grain to it. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go put our large pieces, our water and our oil, in the tempering oven 
for two hours at 400 degrees and we will see you back here at the vise to snap them again. We started this process to find out if ball bearings were good knife steel. And we found out a few things. We found out that for ball bearings, the heating it up to critical temperature and letting it cool down in the forge is not a good enough annealing cycle as seen with the control piece here that just absolutely snapped off. It is not a water quench. As we can see here, and from our initial um, piece, it just shatters. But we did put it through the water and the oil through a tempering cycle of, at 400 degrees for two hours. And it did fix a little bit of what the water did to it. It didn't shatter this time. And it tightened up that grain, as you can see. What we did find out is... in absolutely 100% it is knife steel and it is an oil quench steel. Do we know that it's 52100? No. Without cutting off a piece, sending it in for metallurgical analysis, we just don't know. But look at that grain compared to the grain before temper. It's still a little granulated, so what that's telling me is that we quenched a little hot we need to lower our quenching temperature a little bit, but that's not what this video was about. Pretty pleased with that though, and I can definitely say that ball bearing steel is knife steel. Stay safe out there everybody, be well, and as always, forge on.